Today we are talking about heroes in our community and we have Ms. Kotsis, a volunteer for the Salvation Army. How would you describe the purpose of the Salvation Army? Okay, so the Salvation Army started, I think it was last century, could have been even before that, and it's basically a Christian organisation and their main aim is to help people in need. Those people may be um, people that are homeless, people that are going through, say, domestic violence or abuse, people that have addiction issues, people that have no money and can't afford to feed their children. Um, believe it or not, these, these things are increasing in our society today. But, yeah, basically it was a group, church-based, who's there to help people in need. Types of volunteers can have in the Salvation Army. Okay, so as I said earlier, it is Salvation Army is like a global organisation. Even though it started in Britain as a smaller one, it's now reached um, the far ends of the globe. So you will find Salvation Army volunteers in war-torn countries where um, there was at one stage where they would go and they would help the wounded soldiers and everybody um, with healthcare, medicine, um, help nurse them, helping them make, help make them feel better. Um, there's Salvation Army volunteers that work in the Salvation Army shops or stores that I'm sure many of you go to. And there's, when I was volunteering, I used to teach homeless kids. So at the time we had the Year 10 certificate and I was helping them to get through the Year 10 certificate so they could maybe go on to Year 11 and 12. Um, we have volunteers that come in and take people on excursions or trips, like day trips, out to the Blue Mountains, to the zoo, anywhere they haven't been. We have um, one of my volunteer roles now is to teach um, refugee and asylum seeker women on how to speak English, like teaching them the English language and things like that. We have volunteers that put on Christmas lunches for homeless people so that a lot of people off the streets can come in and actually get a warm... Christmas lunch, or um, it's in the different centres that I've worked at. So some are like where the homeless people come in off the street, so it doesn't matter how many come, volunteers actually have enough food and everything there waiting for them. And then we actually work at certain homeless refuges where the homeless refuge is their family. This is where they're spending Christmas. So we try and make it as nice as possible for them. Um, we work with domestic violence, we work with people, as I said, that have gone through homelessness, domestic violence, addiction issues, poverty, so the list goes on. What is the company culture like at the Salvation Army? Uh, what do you mean by company culture? Like, how, what is the culture like there? Okay, I, um, I'm lucky enough to say that I've actually, I spent like six or seven years, I actually worked with the Salvation Army, and then after I finished and came back to teaching, I now do volunteer work there. It's, I think you've got to be a special type of person to work in an NGO like this. You give up a lot of your time. Um, your pay is not great. So to do that, you have to work with the people around you and everybody wants to help people. You can't work somewhere like that if you don't want to help people. You see a lot of, um, you know, devastating and really saddening things that happen to people in our society. So if you can't count on your workmates or the people you volunteer with for support, um, it doesn't work. So it's a very supportive system, very, very supportive. But it is, that's the culture. It does have a lot of religious overtones, but the one great thing that I can say about um, the Salvation Army is they put their religion aside and they will help you. It doesn't matter what religion you are, what race you are, what um, sexuality, anything like that. It's all, you're a person, you need help and we will help you. So that's a great culture to work in and to, whether you're working or volunteering. So does that answer that question? Yes. Yeah. Yes, totally. When did you become a Salvation Army volunteer? It's a long time ago. Okay. Um, round... 2005, and 2000, 2005, 2006, I started working there, but also volunteered like in my off time to take people on excursions and stuff. I worked in, are you going to ask me about what work I did? 
Okay, so can I tell you now? So I actually worked in a homeless women's refuge. So it was a refuge, which a refuge is a place that um, has beds and stuff, and people come in who don't have anywhere to stay, and they'd come in and we would help them. They could have, we'd have overnight stays for like people who are really desperate, and the police would bring them in or we'd find them out in the streets, or we would actually extend that and they would have three months. So they'd be able to stay with us for three months. And what we would- Just an interruption, Mary and Yusuf, could you come to the front office, please? Mary and Yusuf to the front office, thank you. Sorry for the interruption, guys. What happens when you're like out of school? So they would come in and they'd have three months with us. In that three months, we would teach them about budgeting. We would get healthcare professionals if they had an addiction problem, whether it was alcohol or drugs, we would put them into services that would help them. We would, if they didn't have work, we had employment, um, little employment groups that would help them get CVs ready, find work and things like that. If they were going through domestic violence, we would actually help them like deal with the issues, whether it was police issues, court issues. And then I worked with, um, and then I changed from that and we started working. We actually, where I work, we started the first human trafficking um, accommodation, which basically means people that were brought into Australia as slaves and had escaped, or people dogged the, dogged, like went to the police and told them about them, they could come to us and we would look after them. So I changed from being from the homeless refuge to then um, concentrating on asylum seekers and human trafficking. Because you know we have slaves here in Australia, okay? And I was also part of the group that lobbied the government so we could have our first Modern Slavery Act. We started lobbying the government about five, oh geez, about 2008, 2010. That act has now become law, like now, this year. So I'm really proud of that. But we all need to be aware that modern slavery is everywhere. Restaurants, restaurants you go to, Car washes, nail places, girls, everywhere. Okay, does that explain yeah. that one? Yeah. I know I talk to people. How do you help people in need as a Salvation Army volunteer? Okay, so I've already I've already answered part of that. Yeah. So we do. Are you talking about me personally? Yeah. What I do now. So my volunteer work now, because school keeps me very busy as well, is usually cut to I'm called when. The centre I used to work at needs me. So they may need someone that has the experience to take people to the doctors or to the hospitals and to stay with them so that I offer that type of support. They need, I still go in there and do classes, um, not as regularly as I'd like. It's usually once a month. They call me in when like their regular person can't, can't be there and I'll go in and take over and do the classes. I occasionally go in and run Zumba classes, not that you can tell, for the women. And occasionally, um, I also work at, called into work at, when we have stalls at different festivals and fates, and like we volunteer there on a rotational basis to help out, um, well, obviously the Salvation Army, yeah. Why did you become a Salvation Army volunteer? After working there, I really like the organisation. So even though I personally am not very religious, I don't see it as a religious organisation. I do see it as an organisation that helps people. And with the way government has been cutting a lot of funding for people in need, closing mental health sectors and things like that, if we don't have NGOs and volunteers aren't there to help um, corporate or you know organisations like the Salvation Army, St Vincent de Paul and a whole heap of other ones, they can't do the work that they need to do. So we, I volunteer because it's something that's needed in our society. Can you describe a memory of you as a Salvation Army volunteer that you can share with us? I have some really good memories and some really sad memories. One of, um, one of my saddest memories was I had a client, because I was a caseworker at one stage with the um, Modern Slavery Act, and we couldn't, even though she was brought out to the country um, to marry. So she she was sort of brought out to marry a guy she had never met. So it was sort of like a forced marriage, never seen him, came out, married him, and then his family used her as their domestic slave. So she was a slave in the house, as well as the business. And 
she'd get like abused and hit. And you know, guys, this was in Auburn. So, so I had her and then she ran away and she came to us, her, she was my client. And I worked really, really hard to get her um, visa so she could stay in Australia. Unfortunately, because she had agreed to the marriage, that didn't happen. So she had to go back, she had to go back to India. And that was a really sad thing for me because I worked with this girl for like four years and I remember like I remember taking her to the airport and crying and stuff. But in saying that, when I said we have global we have people all around the world, we had people in India and stuff. She went to India, she hooked up with the Salvation Army over there, they looked after her, she made up with her family, she they got her a job from computers, a whole heap of stuff. She's now married. I'm I'm friends with her on Facebook. She's now married and she's about to have a baby. So it's a sad and good story in a way. Like I was really sad that she couldn't stay here, but she now found someone that looks after her and she's going to have a baby. Oh, I've got goosebumps. So that's, that's a really happy, a sad and happy story at the same time. Do you volunteer at any other charitable organisation? It's mainly that one that I do work for. Occasionally my partner volunteers for some um, more sort of political ones that we go to rallies, you know, to stop mining and all that sort of stuff. But my one is mainly the Salvation Army. I think it's because I'm comfortable there and I know the people there. Do you consider yourself as a hero? Why? Why not? I don't actually consider myself as a hero. Um, I don't think what I do is... Okay. Oh, this is a hard one. Because I can't say, yeah, I do. Because I, I think some of my actions maybe might be heroic. And I think people that go out of their way and give up their time to help others is heroic. But also, in a way, I don't see myself as a hero because I see that I think that in all cultures, especially my culture and I'm Greek background, we've been brought up to, like, it's our duty to help others if we can. I was brought up like that at home. So it should be the norm. It should be, everybody should be living with that sort of ethos and that sort of, so in a way, it's not a heroic action when you think that it should be the same for everyone. We should all try and live our lives that way because who knows, one day the shoe may be on the other foot and you may need someone to step up and help you. Advice can you give to young people about helping others? Guys, there's nothing um, more. It is a very rewarding feeling. And I'm not saying do it just because it makes you feel good, because there are times when you'll see things, then you'll go home crying and you'll say, I can't believe that people could be so mean or cruel to each other. But when you help someone and you see them better themselves, get up there and like, make a success of their life and I do have a few success stories like that that I've still kept in contact with you think wow like I helped that person and it's that pass it on and guys it is really you learn a lot of things when people hit rock bottom you learn how strong people can be trying to bring themselves up from the bottom and it's something that you take with you and you apply it to your life and it does make you a better person so Thanks for your time. You're welcome. Courses. We appreciate your contribution to our community. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Well done.